Hi, my name's Jeffrey. I'm an amateur audio engineer, and if you're at all like me, then audio compressors have always been a bit of a mystery. I've watched a bunch of videos where someone would give a very thorough explanation of threshold, attack, release, knee, and all these other things, and by the end I'd feel like you might as well have told me how to fly an airplane because I have no idea what to do with any of this. What was messing me up is that I couldn't really visualize how, for example, a 30 millisecond attack would affect, say, a bass drum. So I came up with a little self-training tool in PreSonus Studio One. This is release 5.5, should work in earlier versions. And it's helped me understand compressors better. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. But before we do that, let me show you what this is. We have a one second loop here through one measure a single impact XT bass drum beat playing one time a second comes through the compressor and then down here into the scope. Up here you'll be able to see what the original signal looked like and down here you'll see the compressed version. Now right now I have the compressor turned off so we'll press play and you can see both these signals look the same and now we'll turn the compressor on. And now you see the lower signal is compressed and looks different from the original signal. And then we can play with it from there. Here, I'll put this on so it's 100% compressor. And say you increase the attack a bit. And you can see how more the initial signal comes through. Okay, let me show you how to set this up for yourself. First, we'll create a new song. And you can use the empty song template, or I have one set up for doing these video demos. Let's call it Compressor Vision. And set the tempo to 240 beats per minute. That way, every measure will be one second long. And click OK. And here's our new song. OK, the first thing to do is add an instrument track. So we want to show instruments, F6, or just use the pull down menu. We're going to use impact, so we'll just drive that over here. Okay, there's impact, and let's load the 60s a go-go preset. Okay, and make sure we've got a bass drum sound. There it is. Now we can close that, and the next thing to do is create a loop. We just draw the loops up here. I already had one there, but let's draw one for just this first measure. There's that, and then activate the loop down here at the bottom. Okay, and we've got a loop that right now is playing nothing. So then the next thing to do is open the editor, that's F2, or from the pull-down menu. And we can come down here, make sure we've got the paint tool in place. Go ahead and paint in a measure's worth. Come up, find the bass drum. Okay, we'll just add that in. So now when we play the loop, all right, that's done. Now this is where it gets interesting. We'll open up the console. It's F3 or from the pull down menu. Now when impact opens, it creates a number of channels. So we're going to put all these onto a bus. We'll select the first one and then shift left click on the last one. And now I'm going to right click and choose Add Bus for Selected Channels. So now all of these are coming through this bus. This is where we'll put the compressor in the scope. So to get the effects, you can either press F7 or from the pull down menu. Go up here and get the compressor. And we will drop the compressor into the bus. Okay, there's the compressor. And let's go ahead and pin that. And now we'll drag the scope over in as well. And I went right past it. There we go. There's the scope. Drop the scope in. Okay, and there's the scope. Okay, so let's turn this on and see what we've got. Ah, uh, okay, that's not terribly useful. So I'm going to turn down the drum a little bit while we work on this. But first thing I like to do is turn on seconds. That seems to be easier to work with. And then we'll increase the scale time. 
And what this is essentially, let's set it right at 30. I'm going to type that in. Is that each one of these vertical lines is 30 milliseconds apart. So you see this one's about 150. The next one should be about 180. There we go. And the other thing I like to do is move the start position over a little bit. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and move it over to one. So it's 30 milliseconds in. That's just so I can see if there's anything going on over here. But that's basically it. So you've got the simple case now. We can do things like play with the attack and see what that does here. So let's drop the attack down. You can see how it dropped the initial transient. Uh, we could pull in the release time, or we could kick the release time out to two seconds, which means the compressor is still running as it comes back around on the next pass. Pop that back up. But that's essentially it. That's the easy case. Now, let's go from there and set up the before and after case. First thing I'm going to do is turn off A and turn on B. So now you've got that blue line like I showed at the beginning. And we're going to move that down so it's out of the way of the other one. So we'll just drop it down here to two. Okay, and then close this and go back to the console. Now that bass drum is coming through this impact ST1 channel. So we're going to take this and add a send. We'll send to the side chain of the scope. Okay, so we've added the send, but there's one more thing that's important to do. Let's pull this up a little bit. And you'll notice that the send is at minus 6 dB. If we leave it like that, then the uncompressed version will be at a lower level than the compressed. So we want to pull this up to zero. And there we go. Now when we go back to the scope again, Double click there. For channel A, we'll use side left. That should be fine. We'll turn that on. And now you see the uncompressed signal there. And we can move it up out of the way. There we go. There's the uncompressed signal. Here's the compressed signal. I'm going to bring down the threshold a little bit here. Now these are both a little bit big, so the other thing you can do is scale them down to whatever you need, but I recommend making it the same between the two. So let's say 0.5 here and 0.5 there. Okay, that's essentially it. Now you can turn the compressor on and off and hear the difference and see the difference. And then you can start experimenting with the compressor and see what happens. You bring up the attack time, you see more and more of the transient comes in through down here. Okay, that's it for this demonstration. But there's one point I can't stress enough. Remember, with this setup, you're using your eyes to train your ears. Your ears are the ultimate judge. And I find it's a good idea every once in a while when I'm adjusting a setting to just close my eyes and listen. I hope this helps you. Again, this is Jeffrey. Mix and learn, my friends. Mix and learn.